be uh, sh uh, should be min a minion for what so some reason because it doesn't add. I, I, I'm not sure exactly, it, it, but they go through it, and the, the Rambam is consistent with it. Isn't that word used in the colloquial like for someone who's significant? He's a barrier. I've heard that. Yeah, it could be. Uh, it could be. Like he's not, as opposed to he's a shlomazel. Don't listen to him. No, listen to this guy. He's a barrier. He has yeah, some I, I have a, I'm not. not I, I've heard I'm that not, saying. Uh -huh. it could it be. Sounds. Yeah. He's an entity. He's not bumper. Uh -huh. <laughs> It's my. It was a statement from Amiraim. Amar Rab Chelba, Amar Rab Huna. Rab Chelba says name Rab Huna. I don't know if Rab Chelba is on the chart, but Rab Huna is on the chart. He's up here, a student of Rav. Beitzah b'samech v'hi. An egg in sixty plus. The egg. That means a total of sixty-one asura. B'samech b'yachas v'hi. Sixty-one plus the egg. Which is a total of sixty-two. That's muteris. Who does the kamei the Rebbe Gamliel bar Rebbe? Someone came to Rebbe Gamliel, the son of Rebbe. He is down here on the chart. His Rebbe, Rebbe Danasi. He has two children, Rebbe Gamliel and Rebbe Shimon. Someone came to Rebbe Gamliel. This is the first time we're probably having it. Rebbe Gamliel, the son of Rebbe. Amalei. He says. Abba leshir barabayim v'sheva, v'ani ashar barabayim v'chamesh. I I didn't read it probably the way that it was read yet. Did you, is there an exclamation mark there? No. Okay, I did. Rashi has two interpretations here. Rashi's first interpretation is that the fellow came <coughs> with a half a zayas of Yisur. Remember, we had a story with Mar Baravashi that Mar Baravashi wanted to nullify it in only half the measurement and thirty times. So, came to, this story happened earlier. Came to Ram Gamliel Bar Rebbe with a half a zayas, and Ram Gam, Gamliel Bar Rebbe said that my father uh, only found forty-seven times with this, and he permitted it. So obviously, you don't need sixty. Uh, in this case, the, where he's coming is only forty-five times. I'm going to permit it. The uh, second interpretation of Rashi is different. The second interpretation is that the guy did not come with half a kezayas. He came with a full kezayas. He says, my father wouldn't even permit, exactly the opposite, wouldn't even permit it on 47 times the amount. He needed a full 60. I'm going to permit it with 45, which is less than what my father wouldn't do. I'm not going to be more lenient than my father. The, the same story, again, two interpretations. Who does the the Shimon Barabi? So one came to Reb Shimon Bar Rebbe, the brother over there on the same chat. Amalei Abalei Shir B'mem Hei Vani Yashar B'mem Gimel. My father wouldn't permit it with forty-five. I'm going to permit it with forty-three. It needs a full sixty. Mm. Or you can read it the other way that it's a half a kezayas. Is he learning it that it's half a kezayas? No, Rashi cites two explanations, but which one does he accept? He's accepting. He's accepting the first interpretation. Someone came to Rabchia. Rabchia, let's see. Is Rabchia going to be up here? Rabchia is right up here on the very top, right after Rabbi Yudan Nasi on the Amarayim chart. He's a student of Rabbi. He's the one that put together the prices. Rabchia and Rabbi came to Rabchia. Amalei klum yeshleishim. Is there even 30? I'm a delicious Why wouldn't he permit it? Because you didn't have 30 times. But if you did have 30 times, Misharin, then that would be good enough. I'm a Rabchanina Guzmano. So that's an exaggeration. What he meant to say is you don't even have 30. You need 60. You, uh, you know, it's not even a question. Okay. I'm a Rabchia Baraba. I'm a Rabbi Shoban Levi Mishim Bar Kapara. Rabchia Baraba was a student of Rav Yechanan that we mentioned was so special that uh, he reviewed uh, the, the teachings of Rav Yechanan every 30 days and Rav Yechanan checked it over. So, they say in the name of Rabbi Shua ben Levi, in the name of Bar Kapara, Kol Yisurin Shabbatayra B'Samach. 
all prohibited things in the Torah require 60 times it. it sounds very simple. However, this is a huge machlekes Rashi and Taisvus, if this is referring to if, there's, if you tasted it by a, a non-Jewish cook, do you still need 60? Where Rashi says yes, and Taisvus says no, it's not necessary. So it looks like a simple piece. It's Okay, Amal lefan of Rab Shmuel bar Rabbi Yitzchak. Rab Shmuel bar Yitzchak says to Rab Chia bar Abba Rabbi, Ata Eimer Kain, you really say so? But Hachi Amar Rabasi, Amar Rabbi Shua ben Levi, Mishum bar Kapara. Rabasi is right here on the chart, right across from Rab Chia bar Abba. He said in the name of Rabbi Shua ben Levi, in the name of bar Kapara, that Kol Yisur and Shabbatera b'Meya, that it requires a hundred times everything that's prohibited. Both of them learned it from the, the, the ram of the Nazir when he completes his Nazirus. So he brings a ram, it's like a shlamim, but there's one extra gift that's given to the Kayan here, and that is the, 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 the forearm, the the foreleg. Uh, the foreleg, the foreleg uh, is given to the, which is the, the, the front, it's given to the Kayan. And it's eaten by the Kayan, and a Zor is not allowed to eat from it. And it's a non Kayan is not allowed to eat from it. It's, it has a special holiness that it's meant to be given to the Kayan. The problem with this is, is that it's cooked possibly together with the rest of the animal, and the rest of the animal is eaten by everyone else. And now I have food that is only should be eaten by a Kayan, which is cooked together with other food. And what's going to be with the flavor that's given over? So that discussion of maybe that could be nullified is going to give me some measurements here of 60 or 100. Okay, so we have to follow this through. The Ksiv as it's written. The Kayan takes the foreleg, cooked foreleg, B'Shela. Vitanya, it was taught in Ebrisa. B'Shela, when it says cooked. Ein B'Shela el Shlema. Cooked means that it's whole. Rashi says, he doesn't know how that means that, but Taisu says that B'Shel lo. <coughs> Cook it. In law, it means that it's whole. Um, now, Rab Shimon ben Yechai, Yaimer, Rab Shimon ben Yechai, we're quoting a Braisa here. Rab Shimon ben Yechai says, Ein b'shel el el shen esbash lemaayel. B'shel means that it's cooked together with the rest of the ram. Now the Gemara explains. The kul ayalma, both the Tanakama and Rab Shimon, Rab Shimon ben Yechai, v'hadei ayal mevashala. They hold that you cook it together with the ram. That's no machlekes. Mar savar mechatech lavahadam mevachel. One says that you cut it off and then you cook it together in the same pot. So you have the ram plus the four, the the four leg, the uh, the sizraya, uh in the pot as well. Mar savar mevashela. One says that you cook the whole thing whole. It must be a massive pot. Vahadam mechatech la, and then you cut it off. What's the shars mevatling the flavor? What is? How does that help? We're going to get to the what flavor difference? in a second. What no, okay. so far nothing. So far nothing. The Iba Yaseima, and some say, if you want, you could say, rather, the Kuli Alma Machatech Lavadam Mavashla. Everyone holds that you cut this right off before you cook the, the rest of it. If you're cooking it all in one pot, does that pot have to be in the, by the Kohanim? Yeah. And then, Miu, yeah, it's going to need to be. Miu, because this has special halachas, it needs to stay in the base of Migdash. It has like the. Uh, Miu, however, Mar Savar Bahade Ayel Mavashla, Mar Savar Bikdera Cheres Mavashla. One of them holds that you um, cook it in the same pot, while the other one says you cook it in a different pot. If we go the first way, Lalish Nakam Aliba Didivriakal, if you say that the, you're cooking it together according to everyone, the question is when you cut it off. So everyone. Well, we can use both opinions to have our discussion about 60 or 100. Lalishna Basar, according to the second opinion, then we're only going to go according to Ali Bader Abshim ben Yechai, that you're cooking it together with the Riyam, and now we're going to have our discussion. We didn't get to our discussion yet. Mm-hmm. Look at the discussion. Man di Yamar Bishishim, the one that said before in the name of Rabbi Shua ben Levi, Rabbi Chia Baraba, in the name of ben Levi, in the name of Bar Kikara, he says, Savar Basar Vatsamis Bahadi Basar Vatsamis Misharinan. We're going to be allowed to eat the rest of this ram, even if you're not a Kohen. The problem is, is that the flavor of this holy uh, leg or arm 
is going into it. How is everyone else allowed to eat it? So we're going to need to say that it's bottom. So how much, what's the ratio of the arm to the rest of the animal? So there's not a lot of meat on the arm, but there is a lot of um, bone. bone. So if I say that I need to nullify arm, uh, um, meat and bone to the rest of the animal, then I would say that there's only 60 times in the animal over this meat and bone. But if I'm only going to nullify the meat of the, of the arm and the bone I'm going to ignore, then I would have a hundred times the meat of the animal over the meat of the arm. You follow? It's, knows the, on the arm, it's not 50-50 meat to bone. It's 70% uh, bone or so. I don't know exactly. You, you work it out. 80-20. 80-20, uh, yeah? It's always 80-20. <laughs> <laughs> so, to the, uh, to the um, meat to bone. No, and, and then I have to nullify that to the rest of the animal. Man <coughs> diyamar b'meya, the one that says it's a hundred, that you need a hundred times to nullify. Savar basar bahadi basar masharinan, bahavale b'meya. This this arm is only being nullified in the meat of the rest of the animal. We're going to ignore the bones, and it's going to be a hundred times in the animal the amount of meat that there is to the meat that's on that on that on that uh, fore, foreleg. And that's Zraya. Okay. So bones are, are, are considered um, meat. According to the first way. If I go 60. If I go 60, I'm including the bones. If I'm going 100, I'm ignoring the bones. Yeah, logically, the bone should either be part of it, should be added to the heter. Right? Because it will absorb. That's what we say. It's, either one or the, it's on the good side or the bad side. Right. That's what we're doing, actually. We didn't say... Uh, even in the one that says 100, we're not saying the bones are going to be in the heter, but not in the yisr. Okay. We're saying it's meat to meat, or meat and bones to meat and bone. Yeah, we're probably, if the bone has marrow, we would probably be including the marrow. Let's say bones without marrow, just to simplify it. The Gemara asks, are we allowed, are we allowed to learn? Remember the Tzadik test? Are we allowed, oh, isn't that amazing? It's not. This is the tzaddik test. I could have said the simon and shulchanach that discusses the bones is tzaddik test. I could have had a. <laughs> thought it's the wrong page. The oh. hatanya, <laughs> but it was taught in a so that we can't learn from this case of the of this the, the ram of the nazar. This is a very unique case, and the brisa even expresses this that this is unique. It says zeu heter ba that this is a leniency that everyone else everywhere else this would be prohibited. What is this coming to exclude? It must mean that everywhere else in the Torah does not go like this. So why are we using this as, an ex as a, uh, a, a, a prototype, a, uh, an example to tell me how to, how to do nullification? Amar Abayah says, no, that's not the, what's going on here. Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda, we've had his opinion several times already. In Zvachim and in Menachas, we had Rabbi Yehuda is of the opinion, Damar Min B'minei Le'batel. He holds that if I have two things that taste, <coughs> taste the same, and one is prohibited and one is kosher, and they fall into one, one another, instead of the kosher one nullifying the prohibited one, it makes it stronger. And it makes it, it, it never becomes nullified. Now, according to Rabbi Yehuda, how does anyone eat the other meat? Only a kayan should be allowed to eat it because the, the meat of the rest of the animal is the same flavor as the meat of the arm. And that's only permissible to a kohen. So how is anyone... So this is a heter. This is something that's permissible. Nowhere else would Rabbi Yehuda say that it should be... Kamash malan da hacha batl. We learn from here that it's batl. The Gemara asks, According to Rabbi Yehuda, so why doesn't he learn from, from this? To, this is a, uh, an example for everywhere else. We see min b'minei is batal. I'll prove it to you. The zraya b'sheila, the cooked uh, foreleg. The Gemara says, "No, Goli Rachmana." The Torah told us already. V'lokach midama par midama sar, that the kain gadol on Yom Kippur takes from the blood, the mixed blood, of the bull and from the blood of the goat, and 
Tabaya Bahadi Adadin and of Lebatli. Both of those bloods were mixed together. And everyone knows that the blood of the bull has more blood, there's more blood from the bull than from the small goat. So, and nevertheless, the Torah talks about both of them. That means that the two types of blood, the two blood, the, the one type of blood, the one blood, uh, isn't, doesn't nullify. What blood doesn't nullify its, uh, the other blood. That's Rabbi Yehuda's opinion that min b'minai, if it's the same type, it can't nullify. So we, we can't learn to anywhere else that it should be nullified because we see it by Dezreya B'Shela. You can't do that because over here we see that it doesn't, doesn't get nullified. Gemara says, Now you have two examples. One says that min b'minai is batal. Dezreya B'Shela. Another example, min b'minai is lay batal. Why are you choosing the, the blood of Yom Kippur? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. We can't learn from a chiddush. We'll have to discuss that later. I'm sorry. Okay. That's why you can't have uh, transfusions don't work from the wrong blood. You can't mix bloods. Hmm. Oh, man.